Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of K Fame. Of course, I am Will Farrow. Leo Thomas, aka Mr. Slick Living. Y'all know what it is, man. It's always undisputed and it's too sweet up in there, man. <laughs> and that's the bottom line. Yeah. Because Pharaoh and Cleo said so. Talk to right? him, Will. Talk to him. Um, you damn right. All right, you hear the copters, man. It's chaos out here in these streets. It's bad, bad in LA, but it's also a whole bunch of excitement because NXT in your house takeover. I don't know how they're throwing and jumbling the words around, but right? they they first of all, the first time NXT has pay per view by themselves on a Sunday. A Sunday. The full show. Yeah. We, I, I was thrown by that. Me and you were kind of thrown off, actually. Yeah. Both of us we were like, wait, so is it not anything? It's not on a Saturday? Is it? No, it's dropped two-day Sunday. Yes, man, with uh, Backlash coming next Sunday as well. You know, but normally I was like, hey, yo, this is new for WWE. And I mean, like, I think this is the, the time to be able to try these things with, like, WrestleMania being split up into two nights, having now, you know, NXT debut on, uh, you have a pay-per-view on Sunday, and not a bad pay-per-view, NXT TakeOver delivered as yeah. usual. Every time, every time NXT is in the building, you're going to leave that arena satisfied. Even if you're there, if you're not there watching it at home, it's just something, you know that these guys set the bar for the entire weekend, man. Yeah. And it's hard, it's hard for WWE to keep up with them boys down there in NXT. And it I is. really, we gotta stop saying down there. We gotta stop saying down there. We gotta stop making it seem like these guys aren't at the exact same level as the superstars we see on Raw and the superstars we see at SmackDown. Don't make that face. Don't make no, that face. No, not just yet. Because, see, see here, here is the one thing that I will say. Okay. That does still keep not, – not, and, and, again, not even for me putting them up here or here. But okay. there are certain things that does still keep that as the developmental brand to create superstars because you're still creating superstars. Now, okay. um, take it these – People are excellent talents, but take them and put them in media. Like, there's not a lot of these cats right now that can go be ringing the opening bell for Wall Street right now because they haven't gotten that proper training. They haven't gotten that proper exposure yet. You gotcha. know, and stuff like that. Right now, they're being utilized for what they know best, their talents in the ring, on the mic, and, of course, building with their brands as well. So being okay. able to not have that weight though is what allows them to be able to form and mold into that and get their audience. So that's why I feel like WWE will always kind of be up here because that's why you go there to be right. able to be seeing that. That's why you have folks like AJ Styles that's ringing in the bell at Wall Street, the Georgia Bulldog. Yeah. Ringing in the Wall Street bell, man. Yeah. You got, you got, I think it was AJ Styles and Daniel Bryan will be involved in like the NASCAR start. Did yeah, that right? yeah. Man. So, no, I, I get where you're coming from 100%. I understand your view on that for certain. It's just, man, like, if we just look at it for the wrestling, God, these NXT guys, man, they, they do a lot. Good. They do a lot, man. Triple H has done an incredible job down there building this brand over the last, what, three and a half, four years now? This is ridiculous, yeah. man. This is ridiculous what they do down there. They brought Shawn Michaels in to help look over everything, and it just gets better and better. Today, in your house pay-per-view for NXT. We haven't seen the in your house graphics in 20 plus years, Will. 20 plus years, in your house pay-per-view. I remember seeing some of the throwback clips of that. Shawn Michaels with the fit standing on the roof doing what Shawn does, which I'm pretty sure he did not go over with. He didn't like, he didn't go back to Vince. Like, hey, I'm gonna do this. No, he went out there and did what he wanted to do. Cause it was yeah. Shawn. Oh yeah. He stood on top of the roof. He stood on top of the roof of the garage and just hit the mm, mm, mm. Oh yeah. When got you, man. Oh, yeah. Brought the host back, the original host of I In Your that. House. Uh, right. had the, uh, gave us a new edition of the ice cream bars. They're now the ice cream okay. sandwiches and stuff. I don't know if those are legit for sale, but if they are, uh, the tokens might have to get one. Yeah, you know, try them. I might try them here on Kayfabe as well. But, yeah. man, like you said, the, the, the graphics, the nostalgia about it, it was just it, – it was dope to see – this black and gold brand get mixed with such an iconic uh, staple in the WWE and then just deliver through yeah. this pay-per-view. Um, but I have to say, though, 
We're gonna go ahead and get into this. Uh, okay. Now, now, mind you, to all of our uh, kayfabe fans, if you have not seen this, we are kind of about to spoil the matches. Um, I'm sure you've seen the results, which is why this comes out after the pay per view. So, if you haven't yeah. seen it, click off now. Cut off the audio version because this is about to come a, a podcast. Surprise! I think Cleo as well. This is not an <laughs> audio podcast, by the way. No, I know. <laughs> yeah, because we this. I think this is just dope to do, and okay. um, we want the sponsorship. WWE sponsors. Uh, but yeah. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah, we're gonna get into it now. First match of the night: the six woman tag match. Right. <sighs> William Tegan Knox and a girl who rolled out in a tank. Uh, something Blackheart. I, I, something I, I, Blackheart. Her and name then, does. Yeah. And then Dakota Kai, Raquel Mendez, Gonzalez, Gonzalez, and uh, Candice uh, Lorraine, uh, which is Gargano's girl, right? Yes. Uh, yes. Um, uh, the Poison Pixie or something. They 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 threw out some random nickname for her out there. They're they're emos now. Um, they have turned those smiles upside down, and now they are, yeah. Um, I'll be the first to say, um, not an impressive match. Um, not up to the black and gold standard. Uh, I kind of feel like this was thrown together at the last second. I think, um, especially with the whole um, Tegan Knox and Dakota Kai rivalry, um, I and kind of throwing that into the mix, and then throwing in Mia Yim and Candice LeRae. And, well, what, what was crazy about it is you had the potential for three individual rivalries. Yeah, like Candice LeRae and Mia Yim would have made for great matches and great mixed tag matches between her and then Gargano and Keith Lee, which we will also get into a little bit later with their match for the NXT North American title. Right. Uh, but it, w- it was just like all of this was put together as one thing, and it was just like it, it, was, a, it, was, it was bad form. It was just kind of just like nobody – it just seemed like nobody knew what they were doing. Nobody knew what was going on. It was sloppy. Let's just call it what it is. It was a sloppy match, man. Uh, some of the selling that was going on in that match where it just looked like, okay, are you guys practicing? Like, what's going on here? It just, it just, it was a very sloppy match. And that's okay. You know, this, you got to go through these bumps. You got to get out there and learn how to be on that camera. And things are different right now. They are. They are. There's no crowd. There is, but there isn't. It's just a bunch of NXT guys and T-shirts. Shout yeah. out to the daughter who was right there next to the ramp as soon as the pay-per-view began. Right. It was literally bit from the In Your House logo, and then it pan left, and I was like, Brock's daughter's out there. And right. then I realized, oh, it's all the NXT guys who aren't wrestling in the actual T-shirts and actually making the noise for the crowd, starting the chants. It was crazy. I, I like what, yeah. you know, the thing that WWE and NXT has done to embrace where we are currently in the world. But, yeah, this first match, man, was just all over the place. Uh, we got a W for the baby faces. I believe Tegan Knox went home and actually covered uh, Dakota. Was yeah. she the one that yeah. yes. she covered yeah. Dakota Kai? And um, I don't know, man. Let's see, just see where we go from here. There's a lot of great talent in that ring. Uh, Mia Yim, of course, is the HBIC. Uh, she's she's put in her work all over the world. And um, But it's the new one that's throwing me for a loop still, the Raquel Mendez. Um, what, what's, what's throwing me is that the fact that their match even is, isn't even mentioned on the results on the WWE website. <laughs> Um, and so like, and I'm coming kind of like at a loss for some of these new NXT stars in that match. And I don't want to say the names wrong, but I know Raquel is one of them. Uh, right. As, um, one of the announcers had mentioned that she kind of has the, the, uh, ninth wonder of the world vibes, you know, shout out to China. Yeah. And she does. And yeah. I was like, I think that is a good way to start pushing her as the new kind of big, for a big woman, you know, and not trying to say like, it, but you know, the, 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 that one. Yeah, she, you, know, I, you, you know how folks get. She could physically dominate any other woman in that ring. She's, yes. that, she's that solid. She's that big. She's that talented. We hope to see that character flourish more. Yeah. It just seems like there's parts of her, her overall performance that just seemed off. She didn't know which way to sell. It was, it was just a thing. It was sloppy. It was. It was sloppy. Um, and, and no no takeaway from the talent that is those superstars. Glad to see me and him in some new uh, 
new gear because uh, the Tims and the big pans was just not working for me. Uh, I'm just like, yo, I'm so, I'm just so glad she got like, well, the, the, the attire she had on the day, I was like, this is the wrestler I believe in. This is the wrestler I can see being the HBIC NXT Women's Champion. And, right. and I just look forward to see her continuing to climb, continue. At least she always continues to get better. That's the one thing I will say um, yeah. about Miriam. She's definitely, uh, and what was funny, even with this sloppy match, did not take away from her whatsoever. Like, even okay. like even during the match, like, her and Candice LeRae kind of disappear into oh. the back. <laughs> like, they find out, like, yeah. well, and, you know, like, you think something's about to come of that and then nothing. So, but, uh yeah, it was uh, not not the best opener of the ma- of the night, but nonetheless, it was a match. Hopefully, they can kind of straighten that out later this Wednesday. Maybe you know, kind of break these matches up, yep. these rivalries up, you know, uh, and we'll see what's next. So, uh, but the next match was Damian Priest ah. versus the Prince Finn Balor. Yes, Finn Balor. Crazy, crazy promo leading up. Crazy video package that went up right before this match started. Finn's heel promo game. Like, I believe the tough guy act of Finn. I believe it. I believe Finn will wrestle his ass off, and he will hurt you in that ring because he's incredibly talented. He's just a solid performer. He always has been. But it's until Finn walks out from behind that curtain that I just realized, like, damn, Finn's kind of small. Yeah, yeah. Small. I'll never forget when I first saw Finn try to stand toe to toe, eye to eye with Seth, and Seth is like, "What are you really doing in my ring?" I'm like, "Damn it, he's so small. He's just a small dude. Great physique, everything about him." But the Damian Priest match, I the level of physicality. It yeah. started off the rip, like you had Damian Priest sitting on the turnbuckle, and the next thing you know, Finn went from posing to full speed, boom, drop kick to the chest, and then the match began. And it was a really, really physical match between these two. Uh, Damian took one hell of a spot off of the uh, the side of the ring onto the steel steps. Yes. And as a man with a bad back, let me tell you, hell no. I repeat, <laughs> hell no. I don't care. I'm not taking that bump, bro. And he took it with pride. He took it strong, sold it well. Uh, and at the end of the match, we saw Mr. Uh, the Prince, Finn Balor himself with his hand raised. Oh yeah, man. The Prince, uh, if you are were a fan of him when his times during Japan, classic heel, and he's just brought all that momentum back here to NXT. Um, just as ruthless as he was then, he is now, as you said, like some of the spots in this match was just phenomenal. And then just even to end of how like how Damian Priest went out with the coup de gras, first of all, to the back of the neck. And then instead of pinning him, Finn was like, no, 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 no. Jumps like air Finn into another coup de gras to just seal in the deal. But what I love about Damien, like, you know, because um, someone had mentioned to me, it's like, yo, man, Damien, stay taking these L's, man. Like, what's going on? I'm like, here's the thing. Damien is taking these L's, but Damien is having these people push to their limits when he takes these L's. Yeah. Like when he when he had with Kid the, the matches he's had with like Killian Dane with uh 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 what is his name? Uh ah the bruiser weight, bruiser weight, Pete Dunn. All of these people that he's had these matches with, uh 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 oh boy that uh ah what is his name? The Russian guy. Russian guy Drogic. Drogic. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Him, Keith Lee, like he has pushed these men to the max. And so it's only really a matter of time. I think once Damien kind of has his eyes set on prize, maybe the NXT uh, North American title once again, or maybe the NXT title, perhaps he'll be able to do something dope. But tonight though, the Prince continues to show his reign, um, was trying to do some things also in the UK as well. So you know, when the world open backs up, who knows exactly if we will get that match between him and Walter. Walter, Walter, the shot ping himself, bro. Yes. Oh, come on, man. That dude is a whopper of a human being. Like, that is, man. If y'all have not seen Walter versus Tyler Bates, 
hands down, I will tell you top five matches of the last 20 years. And anybody can debate me on that. That was one of the greatest matches I've ever seen in my life. That was a straight David and Goliath. And Goliath definitely showed you that the Bible had it wrong. Okay. When the rocks <laughs> in this one, wasn't no rocks being thrown or hurled in this one. It was chops. It was lots and lots of them. One, two, three. You're going to respect the mat, the ring general. But moving on from the ring general to the man who is limitless, Keith Lee. Oh, you back riding with Keith now? Man, I don't think I would never not ride with him. I just. Oh, come on. I just know you, sir. You, sir, are the one that didn't like Keith Lee. And don't act like there ain't no footage of you going, this guy is silly. I am not riding with him. Yeah, you don't take, buddy. Time out. I said Keith Lee reminded me of Kung Fu Panda. That's what I said. (laughs) I never said that I wasn't rocking with him as a North American champion. Uh, This guy's put on some incredible matches. Him That that onslaught of matches of him and uh, Joker. I think Djokovic or Drago Djokovic. They just kept putting on incredible matches. For a guy this size to move how he does, you're just always captivated about what could he really do next. But today, today's pay-per-view uh, in your house, you went up against Gargano, Johnny Wrestling, oh. who's a heel, by the way. Who, before we get before we get into the match, I got to say, I'm really upset with Gargano. Why are you upset with Gargano? I'm upset with Gargano because I always look forward to seeing what outfit he pulls out. He's a big comic book guy. Right. And he's had some incredible in-ring gear based on some uh, some of the comic book characters. He's had an Iron Man one, Captain America, Wolverine, Carnage, Venom. He's had some really dope-ass attire. Oh, yeah. There was a tweet that went out before the pay-per-view saying, shout out to whoever makes his clothes, who drove eight hours to hand-deliver me my attire for tonight. And I was like, damn, someone drove eight hours. Like, I'm excited to see what he comes out in. And he comes out. In this 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 fit with the the Shazam over the shoulder cape, and you we've had this discussion. You know how I feel about Billy Batson and that over the shoulder mini ass cape on. Yes, yes. He was wearing something similar to that with white armor. I was just like, nah. I don't even know who's who's that inspired by. First of all, it was inspired by WWE 2K because that was the exact armor you could put on in the generals tab and decorate, because that is exactly what it looked like. I was like, did he get this from the creative menu for players? <laughs> I was like, what is going on? Not a good look. But Johnny Gargano, of course, did what Johnny Gargano does best, and that was put on one hell of a show. Uh, I love, this one was, I definitely love the, want to say the theatrics of it, like from what it was leading up to, like with the whole key in the eye, like bringing that whole thing back with just the weapon and everything. And just the way of, again, of, of so, so impressive by Keith Lee to be able to keep acting it up to play that, to show like, yo, the eye is the eye is messed up. And so even in some spots of him continuing to uh, grab Gargano's arm to hold him and fight him there, because he can't, you know, p- playing it to show that, He's hit with his, his eye messed up. Yeah. You know, but it and and just some of the dope spots like throwing Johnny Gargano through the, the plexiglass and stuff like man, that. What a sell by Gargano too. What yeah. a sell. Yeah, man. So it was a it was, it was a great match. Like it's it's nothing short of great. Like I and and, what, and you know what's what's kind of bittersweet about it is this is what you expect from Keith Lee, and Keith Lee doesn't disappoint. Nope. You no, know, even even with the spot with uh, Mia Yim and Candice LeRae coming through and stuff, and then you know him sealing the deal. It's just solidifying him more as the North American champion. People love him and behind him. Even as you said with the NXT superstars and with the crowd, you don't get those kind of pushes, especially from your superstars that you work with if they don't either if they don't like you or at least respect you because even the people that get booed there they boo them because of the part that they play Mm -hmm. heels there like when charlotte flair gets booed it's just like but you can hear the realism in that because they know what's up right so it's just like you can hear it like people are chanting 
Keith Lee name. They love Keith Lee. Same thing with Gargano. Gargano sucks. Hey, Gargano Gar- sucks. <laughs> it was. It was just. It's one of those. It's two favorites, and I and I enjoyed it. That's what it really was. So yeah, um, no, incredible match. And like I, I saw a tweet that went out. I think I retweeted it. We have never. It's hard for a smaller heel to make a bigger baby face have good matches together. But Gargano or Gargano inside of that ring, bro, he is a genius. Yes. He knows how to tell a story. We've okay. seen it with him and Ciampa. Like, that was a, a different story altogether. That's just bitter rivalries. That's like God and the devil just beating the hell out of each other every single time they step foot in that ring. That was an incredible way to for them to, you know, finally cap that off. And, you know, Gargano moving forward to try to get that North American title. He didn't get a chance to get it because Keith Lee still walked out as your NXT North American champion. For he is limitless. Limitless. Keith Lee, man, like you said, bro. um, And shout out to him, like we said, for definitely playing up the genius that is Gargano in the ring. And so uh, we move on to... The NXT Championship between Adam Cole and Velveteen Dream, the backlot brawl. So just to kind of catch everybody up with what this led up to. Ooh, excuse me, pardon me. What this led up to. Um, Velveteen Dream was not successful in his last title match. Um, excuse the noise in the background. Like we said, LA is now Baghdad for some reason. <laughs> um, he was not successful in his last match against Adam Cole, thanks to, of course, interference with the Undisputed Era. And so, William Regal, the GM of NXT, had negotiated with Adam Cole to give him one last final shot at the NXT title. But there was a stipulation. If Velveteen Dream does not win, he will never be able to challenge for an NXT title shot as long as Adam Cole is champion. So... Yeah. There was a lot on the line in this brawl. Definitely took it back to In Your House vibes with the pull-up. Adam Cole pulling up in the massive truck with the big undisputed flags waving in the back with the whole decal all over the truck. It was just simply shocking the system. And then um, Velveteen in all his great fashion pulls up in the yellow Lamborghini dressed as... The guy from The Walking Dead. What's the guy with the bat? Uh, Jeffrey Negan. Negan? Negan came dressed as Negan, had the plaits in, and they went head for head. This was a dope back lot brawl. So much went on in this match, man. It was just, it, 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 it's so much, it's, it was so much to get into that we don't really need to get into it. Okay. If I'm just being, you know, right. a, lot of, a lot of spots in there, huh? A lot of spots in there, man. Adam Cole falling into the window uh, seal off of the ladder. Um, Undisputed Era coming through. And then this new guy, this Dexter guy that kind of looks like Stone Cold Steve Austin's son. um, Throwing them in the trunk of the car and driving away. Um, And then, of course, Adam Cole retaining the NXT Championship by hitting the Panama Sunrise onto a ECW pile of steel chairs in the ring to remain champion and uh, now it's just kind of like the question is what's next for velveteen i don't know i don't know will i don't know i've been a fan of velveteen dream for so long we all know he got the pat on the back and the jet pack from cena that's great that's great it's great to have one of the ogs be like hey that's the guy yeah cena's not here Cena's not here to help cena's not on that road every single day Nope. He's not calling Hunter and Vince and all the other producers behind that that curtain to like, hey, why don't you guys give me, you know, Velveteen a look, blah, blah, blah. The build for this match was incredible. Uh, when Velveteen got uh, Cole inside of that steel cage, it was like, oh, crazy build, crazy, crazy yes. swap. I liked it. Um, but, yeah, man, that means no more NXT shots for uh, – NXT title shots while Adam calls the belt for Velveteen. Um, so that's not it for the Undisputed Era yet. I thought this was it. We I thought this was it too. We talked about it. All the other members of the Undisputed Era have been stripped of their titles. Yep. They're no, no longer tag team champion. They do not have the uh, North American Championship that's sitting on Keith Lee currently. And the only person that remains the black and gold representing for the black and gold flag is Adam Cole, man. Baby. 
So I don't know what Velveteen does from this. Please, I don't, don't call him up. It's okay. Don't call him up. I don't know, because here's the thing, man. Lost in the shuffle, brother. Don't do it. Come on, man. Here's the thing. We got, like, uh, and, and, and just because you said that, I mean, Matt Riddle has been called to SmackDown. Yes, he did. Uh, so we will see what's going on with that. But that also could be a huge possibility. Maybe Velveteen Dream is about to get that call up. But uh, as you said, uh-huh. I, I, honestly, if, I'm, if, if just from my perspective, I don't think it's time yet. I want right. to see a Velveteen title reign as the top of the mountain before he moves on. I want a Velveteen era. Yes. Or he goes up. Yes. Um, so and that's but that's just me though. So just how everything is built now. And the thing is too, that I don't like seeing a lot of these cats being moved up and debuting in the current state that we're in now, man. Cause they're just some of these things like you want to hear that pop. Like I want to hear that pop when they go, ow, Velveteen Dream. Hit it. I'm mad. I can't wait. Wow, 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 wow. Yeah. E A R A. Oh man, I can't spell D R E A M. B. Imagine if in the studio like that, the D R A M E. Like, what did you say? Huh? Excuse me. What did you just say? How did you? Did you just? Hell yeah, bro. Velveteen is such an incredible talent, man. And, uh, you know, he was gone for a minute with an injury. Yeah. He's back. And uh, I hope we, we get to see Velveteen in the ring uh, again, going for those big matches, having yeah. such incredible ones. Because the kid in there is just naturally athletic. It's, it's unfair. It's unfair, Will, that there are guys out there who work their ass off, train to have that physique, train to look good, and they won't even be 10% of what a guy like Velveteen Dream is naturally. Oh, that yeah. is naturally gifted talent in that guy. Athleticism oh, yeah. on a, on 120%. How oh, this yeah. guy can move around the ring, how he can jump damn near clear to the top rope if he needs to. He's incredible, bro. I'm sorry. Like, we haven't seen something like him, especially at his size. Uh, there was the only rivalry that I've actually enjoyed from Velveteen, now I think about it, where I was really, really bought into was the one between him and Ricochet. I thought yeah. that was very interesting. I thought they played off each other very well. The buildup for the match was incredible. Ricochet gets called up. I, I wanted to see that go a little bit more, man. I did. Yeah, I to, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I wanted to see a little bit more out of Ricochet, man. Um, again, another one that's up right now. Kind of not sure what's going on with them. But uh, hopefully, you know, some things change, man. But uh, just to kind of keep things pushing, um, someone else who is trying to make their way into – the food chain of the NXT, and uh, this was his first NXT pay-per-view match, and he was successful. Karrion Cross defeated Tommaso Ciampa tonight, took Ciampa out with a sleeper hold, the straight jacket, put him to sleep. No tap out, no nothing. Tommaso Ciampa, the black heart of NXT. Passed out. Passed out. Interesting. Yes. New guy puts Ciampa to sleep? Yes. Now, Karrion Cross has been uh, known throughout the independent circuit, also in, you know, within TNA, I believe, as well as over in Japan. Like, he's very, very, you know, well revered. One of those people to come in, kind of with the impact, along with uh, Scarlett as well, by his side. Um, you know, and Ciampa, Ciampa already the veteran of NXT, as we've already kind of, you know, known about uh, Ciampa. Ciampa's not really going anywhere. Ciampa knows this, this is his home. And so I think this was kind of one of those matches to just kind of let us know like, hey, you know, this is me kind of being put into that Cena role. Let me help build these other new talents and get these people put in and put on in the right kind of way. Um, so uh, match is pretty cool. Um, I don't know how, how I should say this, man. I don't want to be that guy, but I guess I got to be that guy. Be that guy. I feel like the wrong person's in the ring. What do you mean? Why is Scarlet on the sidelines, man? Wow. I need Scarlet in the ring, bro. Look, when I heard these two guys, I, I was like, oh, this is going to be dope. But then for her to be just kind of like his manager, like this kind of like side, like, 
person with him. I'm just like, yo, when is she getting in the ring? Mm. Like this woman is like Tessa Blanchard. She is like fucking Charlotte Flair mixed mm. into one. Like mm. this woman is, has been taking spots with, she's wrestled dudes. And I'm talking about put on shows, wrestling men as well. This nice. woman is literally what she calls the super diva, the smoke show. And I'm just like, why is she on the side? Like no disrespect to Karrion Cross, but for me, it's just like, yo, it, it's, a, it's, another, it's another guy. It's another guy for me. Like, I, I need to see him in a dope rivalry for me to kind of get that attention. But when these, I heard these two being put into the WWE, I thought this was going to be him trying to take over the men's division, her trying to take over the women's division. And it's just like, I, I'm, I, I'm not digging the story, man. I'm not digging the story. I, You're I, one I, episode I, in. How are you not digging the story? No, I, bro, I want to see Scarlett go ham, bro. I want, especially with all of this great talent in the women's division, the iconic matches people would have together, not just with her. I'm just talking about together in a whole, like this is the perfect time to be in there, to be in this fight, because we're going to get into that in just a little bit. We're definitely going to get into the women's, the main event, the triple threat match. Yeah. And that is another reason why I mentioned of like, yo, this is the wrong time for any woman to be playing the manager role, even for even for Selena Vega, I'm like, yo, like Selena, Selena Vega is probably to me. And folks will probably say, you know, I'm I, I'm jumping the line with this. I'm saying it. Paul Heyman. Oh shit. Selena Vega. I knew you were gonna do that. I knew listen, you were gonna put listen, that get and be that even. Keep oh, it, will keep keep it 100 with me. Hold on. The reason why I say that, keep 100 with me. Put them in a bout with one another. He's addressing for Brock Lesnar. She's talking for Andrade. Two people who don't really say anything, so they gotta be they mouthpieces. You cannot, like, it's literally the handing of the torch if he talks to her and they have that conversation. This woman has single-handedly brought back managers like she is hands down one of the like and not only that taking the superstar Andres, Andrade Cianamas, um Angel Garza uh Austin Theory yeah. all of these men are now in the in the in the whole talk of Monday Night Raw they right. are technically the workhorses currently of Monday Night Raw you're right every every Raw I look forward to seeing Zelina out there with her stable. You are right. I will give you that. Yes. As far as the Paul Heyman comparison, though, come on, bro. It's a little too early for that. Listen, man, she's a fiery little Latina with a hell of a mouthpiece. That girl on the microphone is dangerous. Like, it's real. The promo she cuts, when she's in character, you see the viciousness in her. It's there for certain. I'm excited to see where how it builds. I'm here for it. Don't get me wrong. I'm here for it. I want to see it keep building. I want to see how far she, can she really take this stable. I think, bro. Like, I think like she's she's proven it. Like, look, she has Austin Theory now with Seth Rollins. Anything with Seth Rollins and that Seth Rollins touches is a guaranteed title opportunity if you play your cards right. 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 You know what I'm saying? Like Buddy Murphy tag team titles. Buddy Murphy was in obscurity for the longest, and now this dude is probably on mon on television every single day. Yeah, that ass. He went from what was you are cruiserweight champion, cruiserweight champion, kind of before that NXT tag champions. Buddy and Murphy. People forget about that when he was when he was there. Alexa Bliss is old thing. Yeah, Alexa Bliss. Yeah, you know, uh, not gonna get into that, but yes. And so you know, Pete, like, and you know, going by the whole best kept secret thing, but. Didn't really do anything, but then coming on to Monday Night Raw, kind of getting that, that a little bit of that push, and then getting under Seth Rollins. Now this guy's winning titles. Now this guy's in a good picture. Same thing with Austin Theory being put into there. Yeah. So it's just like yo, and it, if it wasn't for Zelina Vega, and then even to outside of that, my whole team is on. Her husband is doing great. Main <laughs> event team. Alistair Black. Alistair Black winning right now. So Talk that's what I say. And the thing is, she's doing it in a time where managers are not what it is right now. Nope. 
She's the only one, and, and she's the one that's holding it down. Because you, because you already know how hard it is to get camera time to be able to do interviews like that, to be able to have conversations like that. So the fact that Selena Vega gets to do those things, be able to drop those onto Twitter to announce what's happening and stuff like that when Andrade is going to challenge somebody on Raw before anybody else is even aware of it. That's yeah. the reason why I put her up there. Because like, don't get me wrong, no disrespect to Paul Heyman. Paul Heyman is an absolute legend. I'm not sure if he's in the Hall of Fame, but if not, should be already. He will so, be. Okay, top man, like for, for real. But... Yeah. He did it at a time where everybody had managers. Everybody was doing something. Gotcha. For her to be able to pick it up when nobody did it right. You've seen it with everybody. Like Lana in the tank. Aiden English in the tank. I don't know why I keep going to just Rusev, but it's just, it's just happened to be Leo Rusev. Rush. Leo Rush all right. down the tank. You've seen yeah. all these people crash and burn as managers. Yeah. No, you're right. I'll give you that. You're right. So she's revolutionized what it is to be a manager in this modern day and age of entertainment and, and social media and wrestling. Like, yo, she's, she, you're right. You're right. She is definitely now the, the bar for what it takes to be a, a manager in this day and age, man. Yeah. Shout out to Zelina Vega. And yeah, no, she's yeah. definitely holding her own. She definitely. definitely is. So, uh, yeah. but, but to just get back into uh, NXT TakeOver in your house, like we said, Car Karrion Cross defeated Tommaso Ciampa. Um, like I said, not really much I can say about the match. Just you want Scarlet, we know. I want Scarlet, man. I want I Scarlet because yeah. now it brings us to because just just I want you to picture her in this match if you saw it, the right. main event, the triple threat match for the NXT Women's Title between the champion Charlotte Flair, Rhea Ripley, and Io Shirai, and who stood tall today? would be the empress of the sky, the villainess herself, the clipped winged angel, Io Shirai. I love her. The new NXT women's champion, and she did not disappoint. Now, no, look, I don't, I don't like to compare anyone to, to, to anybody, but if I had to say, if this woman is not the Jeff Hardy of NXT, this woman will jump off anything. She will jump off anything. I, I'm not only going to say, I, you know, it isn't her nickname, the genius of the sky, but her ground game is just as nice, bro. Yes, bro. She's, to me, she's AJ Styles level in that ring, bro. She can do anything. And it's her character. When she flipped and she went heel, and the first time I saw her come out, the new music entrance hit, and the look in her eyes, I was like, oh, I like this. Yes, bro. Hey, by far, Damn. by far, I think the best turn in the last 10 years. Yes. To their favor. Yeah. Like before then, you know, Io Shirai came out with the kind of like the little animal mask and stuff like that. And I was like, yo, I love the way she flies because she's just she, relentless with it. Like she just don't care. Like she just like, it's just natural to her to just throw her body in the air and, and maneuver in the sky. But then, like you said, man, for that whole thing to switch up, and I was like, "Yes, all yes. of it, the aesthetic, yes. the 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 fit, the sound, the lasers, the look, the makeup, everything about Yoshira, I'm a fan of." And I can't remember which NXT takeover it was, but she was definitely this was after the turn, and the whole crowd, "Let's go, EO!" They had already bought in. Oh yeah, they loved oh. her. They loved her. So it's great to see it all came to fruition. She is your NXT Women's Champion, taking down not only Charlotte Flair, okay, but Rhea Ripley. Yes, man. Who Rhea. is an incredible talent. Incredible, man. Listen, um, one I was rooting for last year, it was the year of Ripley. Man, what she did at SmackDown, what she did at War Games, even what she did at WrestleMania, going, taking Charlotte Flair to the max, and then, of course, Charlotte Flair, like what? This is Charlotte Flair we're talking about here. This is Charlotte Flair. You know, this is this is one of the this. this let me. Let, I just got to say this about Charlotte Flair, man. Can I can I speak my mind, Cleo? You can always speak your mind. Here, this is what Kate Fabe is for. Can I speak my mind about Charlotte Flair? And I want to tell the truth about Charlotte Flair. Man. Uh oh, tell the truth. Can I? Can I, can I, let me, let me, let me, let me get my get pop right. out of say the man pipe, man. Let me get right. 
Oh my God. Let me tell you about Charlotte Flair, man. I love every single person that hates on Charlotte Flair. She's a flair. Oh, she gets all of these chances. Oh, she's just the golden girl. They just give her all these shots. Let me tell you something. There's only a few that get that shot, get that bar, break that bar in half, make mm -hmm. a bigger bar, throw that bitch up there, and she goes, I wonder if I can jump and grab that one. Talk I'm about it, myself to get there. Talk about it, Will. Charlotte Flair, for the last over five years, has yet to disappoint. Just when you think it's like, dog, there's nothing else Charlotte Flair could do ring-wise. It's like, bet, say, watch this thing. Mm -hmm. And she just does it. Yeah. This is a woman that I, I, I and, and what's just crazy about it is, take away the flair aspect. Mm -hmm. Take away the name. Yep. And this woman would still get to the caliber of what her name is anyway. Yeah, brother. With what she's doing. This woman is simply phenomenal Talk in this it. ring. This woman takes this eat so serious. And yeah, it's just every time you see this woman, to be able to run through the entire WWE roster, to go up against Ronda Rousey, to make Ronda Rousey basically quit. Yeah. To take on Trish Stratus as the fair, as her farewell match, the person that revolutionized women to get a chance to have someone like uh, Charlotte be past that torch and well deserving of it. Yeah. So it's literally just like not only is it is it great for her to be a flair, but it's her hard work and determination to show that I'm not gonna just lay on that name yeah. for me to get where I am. I came here to do something. Twelve time woman's champion? You said you said it's it's great uh her her name. Okay, we know we know what the flair name means. The legacy. There's mm -hmm. a written flair. She has a lot to live up to being Ric Flair's daughter. She knew that getting into this business. She's exceeded everything we could have expected. You take, like you said, you take away the Flair name from her. Her in that ring is one of the best I've ever seen. Like she is leaps and bounds better than many on the roster right now. Many in the roster in the past. I don't know if I've ever seen a woman step in that ring and do the things at the level that she has consistently done them at. She's taken the risks. She's put on incredible five-star matches with all, like you said, she ran through the WWE roster. She came back to NXT to let it be known, hey, I can run this shit down here too if I wanted to. Oh, yeah. Oh, she's incredible. So for people to be on her neck about it's because of her last name, like you said, take away the name and you would still respect that talent for what it is, Will. She's incredible. Yeah. You should never call that into question. I feel sorry. I hate the fact that the generation we live in, the society that we live in. Yeah, we get it. It's her last name. Yeah, she was going to get those chances. Yeah, maybe it's a little bit of the rub. Maybe it's Triple H. Yeah, it's all fun and games. They all run together. It's family. But still, she's one of the best, bro. Yep. Hands down. This is one of the ones that I can say that um, – as people go, like some 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 folks that you see as wrestlers, when they say like, "Oh man, if they was in the Attitude Era, they'd never make it." Like, or if they were in this Golden Age, they would never make it. Charlotte Flair, any era, any era, any era, nineteen ninety, WCW versus WWF. She'd have helped them of us. She'd have helped them win. Whoever side she was on, they were gonna win. She'd have been in the NWO, bro. She'd have ran in. <laughs> She'd have been woo, just out there. Yeah. Out there, anything. So, but yeah, man. And she didn't disappoint in this one. Neither did Rhea Ripley, EO Shirai. This is one of those, like, I didn't know who was going to win. I didn't know how this was going to go. My, Of course, my first thought was, like, Charlotte Flair is going to, of course, find her that spot like she normally does, capitalize, take the win. I was literally going to say, I had said, I was like, I think she's going to pin EO. I think EO, she's going to fall to EO. But EO kept coming through when she when she survived that natural selection i was like it's different, it's different. okay let me see what's going on and then i saw uh 
Rhea. Yeah. And then, of course, Charlotte Flair gets her in the figure four, transfers to the figure eight. And which made her tap, which is how she lost the title. Which is how she didn't lose the title. And, and I thought it was about to be a repeat at first, but I was just like, I know EO's going to break this up. And then I see the camera change. EO's on the top of the turnbuckle and the switch. Now, I'm thinking she's going to go for Flair. Got you. I'm thinking she's going to go for Flair to break up the hold so um, Rhea doesn't tap. Okay. Goes for Rhea. And first of all, knee to the face. If you, if you, watch, if you go back and watch the tape, bow, out of there. Yeah. Out of there. And then the pin. One, two, three. New champion. And I lost it over here. Like, man, I can't even show you, like, what my room looked like right now. <laughs> Cause I like I could not believe it. Io Shirai became the new NXT Women's Champion, and it's so well deserved. This woman has just like this is like she has capitalized on what it means to be a NXT superstar to take yeah, the opportunity to see that okay this isn't working. I like to try it my way. And it pay off in such a big thing. And everyone that's behind this girl, the confetti, the streams, the traditional Japan celebration. It was just everything that just capitalizes pay-per-view for NXT TakeOver. Yeah, brother. I'm excited to see what happens next with, with EO, man. Uh, she, has a, she has a roster to run through down there. There's a few yeah. superstars who I'm excited to see her go up against. But uh, well-deserved. And I don't think I'll ever be rooting against her. I wanted to keep that title, man. She's one of my favorites. Yes. She has definitely made it into Cleo's favorite wrestlers, man. She's incredible. I love her. Yes, likewise here, man. I cannot knock that. So, uh, but, yo, shout out to the uh, pay-per-view for NXT. Take yeah. it in your house. Definitely never disappoints with an mm -hmm. NXT pay-per-view, and it didn't here. So, uh, but from what I've also heard down there in the NXT realm, thanks to Cleo, there are some title revisions coming through. Cleo, yeah. would you like to tell me to tell me a little about that? So word is things are being uh, whispered about that there supposedly would be redesigns to some of the WWE titles. WWE is working on revamping the NXT championship. The new look has the same design but is bigger in size. Now, with that hint at potentially what the title could look like, it makes me think of what the title already does look like. And I'm sitting around Adam Cole's waist. It's pretty big already. Adam Cole's not the biggest guy, but when he has that championship belt on and he takes off the shirt and he's out there getting ready to put it up for the crowd and he says, I had him cold, baby. It's pretty big around his, his stomach already. But it reminds know. me, it reminds me of the, the WWE championship when Seth uh, uh, came to Raw the next night after WrestleMania when he oh, cashed yeah. in. Bro, it was like underneath his his, his, his uh, chair, like he, he was his right there by, yeah, by his pectoral. Look, oh, God damn, that belt is huge. huge. And so it made you look at like how big it was it on Brock. It's, and then you could tell they sized it down just a little bit oh, for yeah. Seth Braun. But for NXT to be making the championship a bigger size, I'm very curious to see what that looks like. That's not the only title that's said to be getting a redesign. The WWE, the WWE US Championship is also getting a redesign. We don't know what it looks like. Currently, we have Apollo Crews as the champion for the U.S. champion. So I'm very curious on what they may change it to. Hey. Quick thing I got to run back to. We didn't get a chance to mention, and which I was really happy and really excited to see today, was Keith Lee getting in the ring and having the Black Lives Matter on his gear. Yeah. Very important moment in history, especially what's going on right now, for him, to be a, for him to be a black man, for him to be in that WWE ring and represent for Black Lives Matter. Very important moment, man. So... uh I, listen, I'm not saying that we will see it, but I would like to see a black flag. Maybe the you remember that Thug Motivation Young Jeezy flag? I was I, as soon as you said like the readers, I was like, yo, we get a black and white United States flag, a United States title. I'm like, I will lose it. I'm like, yo, let him follow Cruz do it, bro. He'll get all. Yo, I was I'll like, yo, I want that belt. Listen, that would be one of the best like WWE. Like, yo, we with y'all. We with y'all. Facts. 
turn it black and white. I don't care what nobody say. This is our thing. We got this. But, you know, yeah. I, I do look forward to seeing it. Uh, as you said, the redesign for the belt for the NXT Championship, making it a little bit bigger. Like you said, it's already big on Adam Cole, but it is kind of small on Keith Lee. Just throwing it out to the universe. Man. Oh. Two championships. Oh. Is that right? Hey, I'm just, you know, I just, you know, you know, I got a root for my Texas boy. But, you know, United States title. But, I have a new segment that I want to add in the cafe, which is why I'm so glad that you brought up the read the type uh, redesign titles, okay. is because I thought of this uh, outside of just having the questions that we normally talk about. I found a way to be able to kind of tie these in with us to reminisce and be able to still kind of have something that you never thought about from this perspective. So, the question that I have now is, which title belt are you? So, the way that this has worked, I am going to give you an era that we are uh, out of the entire wrestling um, staple of time. And then you are going to tell me, during that time, what belt suited you best if you were going to be a champion? Okay, so era and then belt that you would have during that time. Yes, during that era. Then also we'll get into maybe rivalries you would have gotten into by having that belt. So I think this is a great way for us to dive into those type of things for our reminiscent time of wrestling. So, Cleo. Yeah. I want to throw you into the Attitude Era because, of course, that's our era. That's where we were. Yep. That's what we did. So we did, sir. Yeah, so it is what it is. So I want to know from you, in the Attitude Era, what title belt would you, what champion would you have been? Attitude Era belt I would have around my waist. I'm going to go with the Cruiserweight belt, bro. I'm going to go with the Cruiserweight title that uh, I first saw around Taka Michinoku's waist at WrestleMania 14. Uh I really enjoyed that cruiserweight match, man. I hadn't really watched cruiserweight wrestling before that. I know cruiserweights were kind of getting big on WCW, but I hadn't watched much of it on WWE. I don't recall a cruiserweight match before that day, to be honest. And I'm pretty sure there was because there had to be one for him to get the championship, for him to get the title. But yeah, man, the cruiserweight title during that time, man, it was a, it was a, it was a lane of its own. Yeah, you know, I don't think that that we appreciated the cruiserweights at that time for what they were doing. But it was in a lane of its own. You had a WrestleMania spot, and you had to get out there and do your damn thing. Um, I can't remember who else was fighting for the Cruiserweight titles, though. I'm pretty sure you had May maybe yeah, a young... May, yeah, like oh. Avo, Lance Storm, uh, X-Pac, uh, Billy Kidman, Tajiri, oh. um, the Hurricane. This is like around, like, Hurricane, oh. like around 2002 a little bit and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. But... Yeah, like th- this is during around that time. Like you, these are the people. Well, Ray Mysterio, uh, child, like we said, Jacqueline ha- at one time became. I remember that uh, cruiserweight champion. So you had a couple of like really great holding this title down and stuff like that. Um, now, I, I, at first, I was about to say Jeff Hardy, but I would have been getting it mixed up with the light heavyweight champion. People yeah. tend to forget about that that belt as well. But yeah, man, cruiserweights was it was. Always seen as a show, but it was always like that that opener match. That was kind of the or that in between match before you get back into the story. So for yeah. them to be able to continue to not only one get a spotlight around that time, but now to have things like two hundred five live. Yeah. Ooh, man. Ooh. Pardon me. That was by our sponsors. Tired. Sometimes <laughs> it gets you, and you don't even know it's coming. Tired. Big facts. Official sponsor of Cafe. Cafe. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, and so to see it now, like even here with NXT having that uh, current tournament that they had with uh, uh, Drake Maverick and now the current new um, NXT champion, is, uh, NXT Cruiserweight champion. So um, I, it's a, yeah, I would give you uh, that's a great belt to have. But now who who would you be in a rivalry with during that time? Like out of these people that I named, and so who would you have been going putting your title on the line for? Got to go up against Ray. Got to go up against Chavo. And then I would hope after I put both of them in the dirt, Eddie comes knocking. Young Eddie, too. Young WCW Eddie. WCW Eddie. Mullet Ooh, Eddie. Boy, mullet Eddie wasn't no joke, boy. Mullet Eddie is. <laughs> I might have. And then I would definitely have bitten off more than I could chew. So I would have to go ahead and job out to a young Eddie because I'm sorry. 
he goes down in history as one of the greatest of all times. You can go watch all his original matches at WCW when he first came into the WWE. His original run against The Rock, that great promo. Oh, yeah. Eddie Guerrero was a monster. He was, that bro. Ring, man. He was, yeah. man. Yeah, man. Dang. Okay, so you got uh, – but also, too, man, you got to remember, we had other folks like Dean Malenko. Yeah. Chris Jericho. Ooh. Ultimo Dragon. I remember Ultimo. Uh, who else? Um, six, six, uh, Brad, uh, um, uh, uh, who's the other guy? Oh, I'm always forgetting his name. Uh, Psychosis. Psychosis, Psychosis was in Psychosis. there. I remember him. Disco Inferno. So you had, you had, you had a couple of things, but I'm thinking like how you said to, 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 for you to lose to Eddie, that is just, that, that, that it is what it is. It's just like, you know what? I can understand that. I will take that. And I will be okay with that. And, and I'd I, like to switch those two. I would like to go, my bad. I'd like to go Chavo first, then Ray, then Eddie. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. I can definitely see that. I can see that. So um, what what match, if we're going with Eddie, what match would you want to have with Eddie? Cruiser and Wade. where? And where? Okay. Cruiserweight title on the line. Yep. That, you know, it's going to be fast paced. It's going to be high flying. We're going to put on one hell of a match. Nice. And he has done some death defying stuff before he became the WWE champion. Yes, indeed. I got to keep up with him. This is the Attitude Era. Bring out the ladders. Ladder match. I need a ladder mm-hmm. match against Eddie Guerrero. You I need do. us to. I need us to have two ladders side by side. We're throwing. We're throwing. We're throwing back and forth. The ladders start swaying, and then finally. The Cleo version of the RKO off the top of the ladder. Boom. Lay him down there. Everyone thinks it's over. Cleo's going to go on to win his title. I'm climbing up the ladder, climbing up the ladder. And then what do you see? Eddie Guerrero come and grab me by the leg. It's Eddie. It's Eddie. Sunset flips over me. Power bomb. Boom. That is it. And I am not moving for the rest of the match. Eddie continues to climb the rope. He grabs his title. He is then officially the cruiserweight champion. That's how I would map it. I that's I hey, listen, and that is that was gonna be one of those days that like can't even be mad. Nope. Spect. He's won. He did it. He yeah. Did it. And I can't knock you for that. That is a dope. That is a dope way. But where would it be at? Where would y'all be at? What what it is in pay-per-view? Would you be on Raw? Would you be on SmackDown? Like where would you be? Let's get pay-per-view. Okay. SummerSlam. In Houston, Texas. Oh! H time, Houston, Texas. I mean, come on, he he a Texas boy. Eddie's a Texas yeah. boy. Eddie, yeah. yeah. So let's get it. Let's do it down where he is, where he's from, man. Okay. I know when he won a ship, he was home, but yeah, let's do it down there. Okay. All right. All right. I, I dig that. I dig that. Okay. So cruiserweight championship. Um, I think I'll go now. Um, yeah. I'm going to have to say, man, uh, mine's is not in the WWE, man. I would have had to been in this Attitude Era on that WCW line, man. I have to go with the WCW World Heavyweight title. I am in love with that belt. That is probably going to be my next replica purchase. I've nice. always decided, like, I have to have it in my house. I have to just, I have to be able to just get up one day and just have that one in the world heavyweight. Just, yeah. Ah, yeah. Yes, man. That was just like, I love that belt. It was just the big, the big hunk of gold. The Just the carving, everything. It was like, it was the dopest detail I had ever seen in a belt. And I was just yeah. absolutely in love with it. And so, like, that would have just been me, man. I would have just, I, I, you know, just my physique, just how I am, man, I just would have had to have had myself in that main title picture trying to represent, especially during the time of WCW where everything creatively is going to the NWO. So it's just like, yo, if you can find a dope way to get behind people and be like a sting, be like a Goldberg, you were in. You were a made man. You were doing this. So, I would have had to have classic matches. Like I think my three would have been with Hulk Hogan, ah, uh, Ric Flair, woo, and Booker T. Booker T. Booker T is who I would I would have took the L's to. I would have took the L's to Booker Smart T. Smart man. 
Smart man. Yeah, man. I would have took the uh I would have took the kicks. I would have took the man. I would have took the kicks from Booker, man. Just a uh, H Town legend, man. Just somebody I feel like I'd have been able to have dope matches with, been able to have an understanding between one another to this is for us. Like I don't I don't mind dropping my belt to you knowing because of what we're doing. Let's make history. Let's keep making history in here. Let's keep giving a chance for us to be seen in the main event and stuff like that. Yeah. Time after time, continuing after that. Um, I'd have to go bash at the beach. Oh, wow. Bash at the beach. 97, not understand. <laughs> hey, I mean, shit. And I would have to do it. I'd have to do it in an Iron Man match. Ooh. Me and Book in an Iron Man match, man. And I'm Yo, talking man, about no, like. That's a, that's a dog fight. Yeah, like it gotta be. Bash at the Beach, Iron Man match. I'm talking like score is four to four. Okay. Two minutes left, man. That man hit me with the fucking book in, a scissors kick. I just can't get, I just can't bounce it back, man. We both just out of there. The fact that he was even to do it, he just ain't even getting up no more. Yeah. It's just like, he only dragged over 30 there. seconds and we're just we just out of there. It's over. Like he yeah. he he did it. Yeah, brother. And he wins the title. Booker T. I have never seen a bad Booker T. match. Me and my brother Kadeem talk about this all the time. I've never seen one. No, he has had solid work every single time you watch him. And we don't talk about it enough. No, we don't. But Booker T. has never had a bad match. Not and mind either. you, when he came over to WWE, he could have got his ass sent right back out because the day he debuted. What did he do? He injured the WWE's top star. He injured Stone Cold Steve Austin the day he debuted, bro. That happened. happened. We could have never had it. No more five-time, five-time. Can you dig it? None of that. Booker went on to have some incredible matches with Chris Benoit. Booker went on to have a hell of a feud that got very racially insensitive with Triple H at WrestleMania. Who yeah. I still think Booker could have won that match. I still think that could have happened. But hey, man, you chose the right one. You chose yeah. the right one, bro. I see that. I like it. I, I like that story building. Appreciate that, man. That would have been that would have been one for the ages, bro. And yeah, let's bro. bring that over to WWE and go at it one more time, and then maybe do it at WrestleMania in Houston, like WrestleMania 17, and yeah. it's just me and Booker for the yeah. World Heavyweight Title again. Just yeah. yeah. Oh man! That Everybody was, on their feet, whole crowd rocking. Everybody just, just rocking like it, you, it's been since WCW. It is a clash of the titans one more time in oh. Houston, Texas. They're off their feet. This yeah, crowd is going wild. Yeah, baby, hometown boys. I love. Yes, it. man, just in that bitch, just selling it out, bro. Still yeah, in the bro. show. Still yeah. in the show. That's me, man. So. Uh, do we want to do one more? Or do we want to just give them a little dose? Give them a little dose, man. Let's see how they react to this, and then we can come back to the table with something new for them. Different storyline, different opponents, yes. maybe different titles. We'll figure it out. Yes, indeed. I think this is going to be dope to add uh, to the repertoire cafe, man. But uh, as we uh, I think we're going to go ahead and bring this to a close. So thank you, everybody, checking out the episode. You can uh, check out the audio version coming to Audio Boom, which will be on all streaming platforms. You can also catch this on uh, my YouTube channel as well, also on the Twitch as well. And we're gonna keep coming with this every week. I wanna thank Cleo Thomas for always holding it down, giving me my wrestling hit that I need during the week to just, I gotta talk wrestling, man. Yes, sir. Gotta talk wrestling and we here, bro. So just, I'm gonna let you take it away, man. Let me know what you got coming up. Let them know what you're doing out here, bro. Man, thank you to everyone who's been uh, supporting on all sides. We have so much going on at this time with the RK Tokens All Dev Gaming. This is me and Will's, you know, a little off to the side thing we like to do. So thank you guys for the support. Uh, make sure you guys subscribe to our Twitch channels. Make sure you check out everything coming from All Dev Gaming and RK Tokens very soon. Big shout out to Kalos Media. Uh, Will helped me and uh, get my brother's new company off the ground. So anything you're looking to get motion for uh, media and tech, uh, make sure you. Go shout out to Kalos Media on Instagram. He's got his website coming very soon, so you'll be able to get signed up for that. If you need your Twitch set up, if you need a live producer for a stream, 
he does it all. So really excited for that, man. And uh, we'll see you guys next week, maybe talking about Backlash and this Edge versus Orton match. The greatest wrestling match ever. What? Huh? Okay, listen, uh, listen, I respect how you guys are trying to sell this, but that title is already taken by Shawn Michaels and and uh, The Undertaker at WrestleMania 17. That's Houston, but we'll, we'll, we'll fact check that one. I know which one you're talking about, though. Yeah, that one. Yes, the one That's in Arizona. Yeah. That's the greatest wrestling match of all time, where Undertaker almost died from that fucking dive. Yes, we're gonna, but we're gonna also have that included after we give our backlash updates, which is gonna be on uh, this upcoming Sunday. You got Bobby Lashley versus Drew McIntyre for the WWE Championship. You have um, other matches going on too. The greatest wrestling matches, they said, uh, Oscar versus Nia Jax. Um, mm-hmm. You know, we'll, we'll we'll see we'll see what's going on, but we'll hit y'all with the action, let y'all know what's going on. But we're also gonna bring. Our greatest wrestling matches. Let's bring. Let's bring three. No, let's bring two. Let's bring two. Two greatest wrestling matches. Cool. I'm with that. Yeah, two greatest wrestling matches from your side, my side, and we're gonna get into it. So tune in next week here on Kayfabe, and we're gonna catch you next time.